Bring to a name. I'm having arrived. We call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we normally open school committee meetings with hearing of visitors, an opportunity for the public to be heard in front of the school committee. And uh, however, we had no visitors sign up to be heard this evening. So we'll go right into the agenda. Um, this is, uh, for folks that may not be familiar, the first meeting after an election uh, is the organizational meeting of the school committee. And uh, the majority of the business in front of us tonight will have to do with uh, appointing of uh, members of committees and, and uh, members of the school committee to serve in various offices. Well, we do have a couple presentations also, but uh, the first several orders of business here have to do with establishing, we're seating a new school committee. I guess I should start by welcoming our three newest members. So Mr. Henningsen, Judy Sullivan, Alicia Clark, welcome. Great to have you here with us. And uh, yeah, welcome. Claims it was an accident that my mic wasn't on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first uh, first order is for the school committee to elect a secretary, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to elect Superintendent Kathleen Smith as the secretary for the Brockton uh, School Committee. Second. Okay. Motion has been properly seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Let the record show a unanimous vote in favor of Superintendent Smith as our secretary. Uh, now we have a presentation. So we would like to invite uh, Mr. Minicello to come up for a presentation so that we can, uh, the superintendent would like to make a special presentation to recognize his service as our outgoing vice chair. Oh, good. I just want to make sure we're ready to. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of all of us uh, on the school committee, uh, the Brockton Public School, our students, our families, our staff, uh, I want to thank you for your service the past year, uh, 2012 to 2013. Uh, you stepped in uh, a number of times and served as the uh, chairperson, is that correct? Vice chair steps in? Yes, when the chair is unavailable, the vice chair simply simply uh, mediates the meetings. And I want to thank you again as a first year superintendent. Uh, there have been many hours, uh, many conversations. I think it has positioned us well to to learn and to uh, work as, as a body that is truly moving the agenda along for our children and our families in the Brockton community. So Tom, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank Congratulations, you. Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Get it? Great. Thank you. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, uh, at this point, the newly seated school committee needs to elect a vice chair for the upcoming year. And I'll entertain a nomination. Mrs. Joyce. I'd like to nominate Tom and Cello for another year as vice chair. Okay. Second that motion. Second that motion. So we, we have on a motion. Hmm? If yep. I may. Yep. On Go the ahead. motion, uh, one of the reasons I'd like to nominate Tom is because he's been a committed and uh, exemplary vice chair, and we've had a great run with Tom as vice chair, and I think it's important to continue that momentum going forward. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll call the nominations closed and ask for a motion to order for a vote. A motion to nominate Tom and Michelle. Oh, we have chair. the motion. Okay, I'm sorry. So we need to we need to take a vote. Okay. So uh, all in favor of Mr. Minichello as to serve as our vice chair this year. Opposed? So let the record show Mr. Minichello by unanimous vote. Thank you very much. And I, I will say from my own standpoint as a, as a brand new chair and mayor, um, I, I 
have a tremendous amount of confidence in Tom, and it, it, it will be a big help to me to have someone with Tom's background and experience as the vice chair this year. And I think, you know, Ms. Mrs. Smith is a almost new superintendent, and I'm a brand new mayor, so uh, I think it'll be very uh, important to both of us for this year to have uh, someone with Tom's experience and expertise. So that's great, Tom. Looking forward to serving with you. Go ahead, Mr. Minichello. Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, let me just say this. Um, being the vice chair does not mean that um, I or any vice chair has any more power or authority. Um, you have one vote. I'm just one of basically eight of us because the mayor is a, is a voting member if he so chooses. Um, we have very um, experienced um, members of the school committee. We have Patty Joyce, who actually is a senior member. She's been here the longest. Um, and Patty is very experienced and has um, been a friend and certainly serves honorably. Um, Andy and Michael, you know, are also senior members now. They've, they've, you know, they have a term under their belts. Um, and I know that the new members can look to any of us to, you know, look for guidance or advice. Um, we've done a lot, this school committee, in addition to um, Tony Donegan, um, Tim Sullivan, and uh, our outgoing Ward 5 school committee member. I think we've, we've um, navigated through some interesting times together. Um, and I think last, I, I would say that the last school committee um, was really my favorite school committee. I thought we worked well together. So far. <laughs> so far, exactly. <laughs> so far, exactly, so far. Um, but um, you know, we've navigated through some interesting times together. And I look forward to working together with the new members. Um, it's going to be interesting. We have some important issues coming up, especially with facilities and where we're going to be um, having our students attend because our numbers are expa ever expanding. And that's a compliment to the city and the Brockton Public Schools that parents want their students to come here. Um, but we also have you know, important negotiations uh, because with the negotiations comes the funding and as the new members will learn one of the most important um, roles of a school committee person is putting a budget together and we need to make sure that we have the funds available to put towards each different area that needs to be addressed um, so negotiations are going to be very important and you'll find unfortunately that there are a lot of meetings that go on with negotiations um, so if you do your homework, which I know you all will do, and you put your um, foot forward for the best interest of our students, like I know my fellow members who have served with me do, um, we'll do just fine together. So thank you. And I look forward to serving with everyone. And Bill, congratulations. Well, and I'll just one quick follow-up comment because Tom alluded to it. Um, I am in a little bit of a unique position taking over as the chair, as the new mayor, having been a member of this committee for the past four years. So um, I do want to say that uh, I do plan to exercise my vote at times um, so everyone is uh, notified up front. It, you know, it really is a personal decision, I think, of various mayors historically. Uh, the last couple of mayors didn't vote, but the couple of mayors before them did vote sometimes. So uh, Mayor Farwell, who was in the same situation that I find myself in, coming from school committee to uh, to the mayor, mayor's office, voted frequently. And I know that mayor units voted on occasion. So um, I don't intend to vote on every routine matter that comes in front of the committee, but on a, uh, on a significant matter that I really have strong feelings on or on something that I anticipate would be a close vote. Um, I, I do intend to exercise my vote and I'm very invested in the work we do here. I mean, I've been part of it for the past four years. We'll be considering a lot of things during the upcoming year that we've worked on previously and um, I, I think that Superintendent Smith and I are off to a great start. We've already met a couple times and we've committed to meet weekly and, and she's also committed to having me out visiting schools regularly, which I think is an important role for the mayor also. Um, you know, education is important to families in the city and I think they need to know that the mayor is, you know, hands-on uh, involved in uh, in his role as chair of the school committee. So uh, I'm looking forward to working with all of you and, and I will exercise my vote once in a while. All right. Any further discussion? You're on notice. You're on notice. <laughs> You're on notice. So be it. Yeah. I'll try not to lose any six to one votes anymore, though. <laughs> um, no, some things are not going to change. That's right, yeah. <laughs>
Okay, next item of business on tonight's agenda is the election of committee members to, commu to the Community Schools Advisory Board. Unlike the other subcommittee assignments, uh, these two positions, we need two members of the committee to represent the school committee on the Community Schools Advisory Board, and these are voted by the committee. So I'll open up the floor for nominations. Mr. Minichello. Um, I'll nominate Michael Healy. Okay. Mr. Healy's name has been placed into nomination. Do you second on yeah, uh, Sure. Second. second on the motion. So Mr. Healy's name has been placed into nomination. Uh, we need two members to serve, so I'll accept additional nominations. Does someone have an interest in serving? Yeah. A motion to accept, I mean, uh, to nominate Judy Sullivan. Okay, great. Gonna second that motion? Yep, seconded by Mr. Minicello. Are there any additional nominations? Okay, we'll close the floor for nominations. I believe we can do this with one vote because there are two openings and two, uh, two nominees. So I'll entertain a motion for a, uh, to take a vote. Motion to vote Judy Sullivan and Michael Healy, representatives uh, from the Brockton School Committee on the Community Schools Advisory okay. Board. Second. Properly seconded. Any further discussion? Could I make a comment? Sure. That's, that will fall under discussion. Um, you know, having been the former director of uh, the community schools uh, and, you know, working with the advisory board for many years, I am very, very pleased. Uh, Mike Healy, uh, welcome back to the board. Uh, I know you are, you know, regularly attend their meetings, which I believe is the second Wednesday of every month. Uh, a lot of things happen with our advisory board. We support a lot of the programs. A lot of ideas have come through our parents. Uh, so, again, I applaud you for, for doing this job again. And, Judy, we're thrilled to have you, Judy. Judy Sullivan is a former Baron Selly Award winner sure. uh, from the Asheville School at the time. I believe it was yeah. an elementary school, and you know you worked with, uh, with certainly the parents and, and the school community there. So I think you'll bring a, a lot to the table. And I see my uh, community school administrative team out there, and I know how important it is to to the running of that operation. So thank you. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor of Mr. Healy and uh, Mrs. Sullivan to the uh, Community Schools Advisory Board. Okay. Unanimous. So thank you very much to both and look forward to having your service. And there's two great selections. I know it's two folks that are very, very involved and very invested in the Community School Advisory Board over the years, as I guess is our superintendent. Right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, next order of business is uh, to uh, take a vote on the approval of the rules and orders of the school committee, uh, which who are enclosed in your program books. I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the rules and orders for this year. Second. Second. And properly, uh, we've received a motion properly seconded to adopt the rules and orders of the school committee as enclosed in your packet. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous in favor. The rules and orders are adopted for the upcoming year. Enclosure number six in your book is the uh, appo appointment of members to the subcommittees. So um, I think what's important to mention here for folks that don't follow the school committee all the time, the vast majority of the work that the school committee does is done at the subcommittee level. Obviously, formal final votes take place here at the full school committee, um, but I think what the public often doesn't see is the tremendous amount of work that's done by the members at the subcommittee level. So that's where a lot of the real um, uh, dialogue and debate and asking of questions takes place and countless hours are put in in subcommittee meetings to uh, bring matters in front of the full school committee. So I think that the subcommittee assignments are very important. These subcommittee assignments are assigned by me as the chair. I think I've tried to discuss them with as many of the members as I could. Um, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept the subcommittee assignments as I presented them to you in uh, tonight's agenda. Motion to accept the notification of the subcommittee appointments. Do I have a second? Seconded by Alicia. Um, any discussion on the subcommittee assignments before we go to a vote? No? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? So thank you very much, and I, I very much appreciate and look forward to all of your work on the, uh, on the subcommittees in the upcoming year. 
Uh, at this point in the program, usually closer to the top, and we're not an organizational meeting, we have a consent agenda. This is the manner in which the school committee is able to adopt uh, pretty uniform and mundane pieces of business as a block without having to have individual votes and discussion on each item. However, at this time, any individual school committee member <laughs> reserves the right to remove an individual item from the consent agenda for individual discussion. Mr. Minichello? Okay, we will remove item D. Are there any other items that members would like removed from the consent agenda before we vote? Okay, I will request that we remove uh, also item F for discussion. Motion to accept the consent agenda minus items D and F. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Second. Properly seconded by Mr. Henningsen to adopt the consent agenda with the exception of items D and F. All in favor? Opposed? Adopted unanimously. Uh, so let me start with item number D, Mr. Minicello. Um, I just want to point out that uh, item D is a generous donation, a, a scholarship actually, uh, the Medusa Zerwiski Memorial Scholarship. And according to the eligibility requirements, um, the candidate must be a graduating high school student of Lithuanian descent who resides in the city of Brockton. Um, the candidate must be have been accepted to a two or four year accredited college. Um, and it's, it's apparently it's a family of Lithuanian descent because it's a criteria of the um, scholarship. But uh, I just think it's important to point out the generosity of some people and families um, affiliated with the city of Brockton. And um, we certainly appreciate that opportunity for some of our students. Okay, any further discussion on the uh, scholarship that's been so generously donated? Motion to approve. We've got a motion. Second. It's properly seconded by Mrs. Joyce. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, approved unanimously. And I would echo Mr. Minicello's sentiments that uh, it's, I think one of the things that struck me my first year in the school committee and when you see that scholarship book come out in the spring is just how many scholarships are made available privately funded for graduating Brockton High School seniors and it's really a, uh, it's one of the things I enjoy about when we get close to graduation time seeing the scholarships awarded to all the seniors graduating and it really particularly in a place like Brockton can make a big difference in helping a family get their young person off to college so uh, we thank you very much for another scholarship being funded. Um, I asked for item F to be uh, held out for individual discussion because I think there is a very significant uh, retirement listed there and I would uh, ask Superintendent Smith to, to explain to us. Yes, uh, recently I was given uh, a letter uh, in the form of uh, an indication uh, to retire by our Deputy Superintendent John Jerome. Uh, John uh, isn't here this evening, um, but he is going to be retiring uh, on March 1st, uh, 2014. I'm pleased I've been able to hang on to him for that long this year. I know he's given up quite a bit to, to remain with our uh, leadership team in Brockton. I will say again, all of you know, and John would not want me to say this, but he's been in Brockton for over 40 years. Um, he's really dedicated, he grew up in Brockton. You know, he went to Brockton schools. He's dedicated his life to, to the city of Brockton and to the Brockton public schools, and he should be uh, commended for that. Uh, he also you know, came up through the ranks as a teacher, uh, a Title I director. He was an executive director of our middle school six to eight and truly made a difference with how they function to this day. He served as your deputy superintendent, I think beginning back in 2009. He stepped in last year when uh, Dr. Malone became the secretary of education and was your interim superintendent and again has been instrumental uh, with me as a new superintendent to kind of uh, to keep my head above water uh, and, and to really understand you know the, the process of of running a school district. So what I will tell you is uh, John has told me that he um, 
will remain to help transition in both the executive director of 6 to 12 in your alternative schools, which we're filling very soon. Um, also, uh, as I bring on eventually two new deputy superintendents, the deputy superintendent of operations and the deputy superintendent of learning and teaching. He will also help to transition uh, those people in their new roles and also will remain to support us as we budget for this next coming year. Um, so I'm very pleased to, to share that with you and uh, again I just congratulate him for, for all his years of service to our children, our families, and our community. Absolutely. Any further discussion? Mr. Minichello? I think all of the members who served uh, and worked with John Rowan um, echo your thoughts. I mean, John stepped up, um, and as many of us know, John was going to retire at the end of um, the school year, June 30th. Um, so John stayed on. Um, took on the role of deputy, I'm sorry, interim superintendent and did a great job and um, has been nothing but generous with his time and um, provided stability to the system, um, provides um, a heck of a lot of in, um, knowledge with respect to <coughs> institutional knowledge to the system, um, helps out tremendously with the budgeting, knows the budget, you know, like the back of his hand, and um, uh, has just been, you know, I think all of us agree, that the man's a gentleman, uh, an old school gentleman. That's John Jerome. Um, so I, I, I just can't say enough about John, and I'll miss him, but I, I know that, again, knowing the way he is, I think he will be generous with us time and if we need him I know John will come back and help us so and I look forward to seeing John Great. Mr. Healy if I may uh, I spoke with John about the very matter uh, last week and I, I gave him a thank you note and a small uh, token of my gratitude and I told him that I've only known the man for uh, for two years but I feel like I, I know him a lifetime and he's been a mentor uh, and a real inspiration and uh, a, a great source of guidance for me in my uh, capacity uh, as limited as it is as a member of this body and I just like to publicly state that the man is uh, par excellence thank you <coughs> any other discussion <coughs> I'll just add my quick uh, <coughs> if I can get my voice back my quick two cents, I did not know John personally until I came on the school committee four years ago, and uh, I think John has been a great leader in the Brockton schools for a long time, long before I got here, and uh, has been a great resource to me during my four years on the school committee, absolutely a guy that a member from the school committee could call at any time and look for information or guidance. and. With all due respect to Superintendent Smith, I don't think anyone knows the Brockton Public School System from top to bottom, side to side, any more thoroughly than Mr. Jerome does. And uh, particularly, as Tom alluded to, <clears throat> when we were going through a period of change and transition last year, that could have been some rough water for us, but it wasn't because we had John willing to step in and the schools ran seamlessly. Some may suggest they ran even better, um, but uh, he did a terrific job as the uh, as the interim superintendent, and he's stayed on as a team player to <clears throat> to help with Superintendent Smith's transition. So I, I just want to publicly say too how much I appreciate everything that John has done for the Brockton Public Schools, and uh, and um, Mike and Tom are both right. He's a gentleman in every sense of the word, and uh, I'm going to miss him, but I'm happy that he's getting the chance to finally sail off into his retirement, and I hope he has a long and, and healthy one. Um, go ahead, Mrs. Joyce. <clears throat> Started on the committee eight years ago and uh, when he was the executive director of um, middle schools and he did a phenomenal job. It was really tough back then in our middle schools and what he did was really turn that whole program around and it was really critical to the success that we have now in the middle schools. But um, I'm really excited for John because I know what a committed family person he is, I know what a committed grandfather he is, and, and I see the pictures all the time, so I'm really happy for him to be able to enjoy this next chapter in his life. Although I'll miss him terribly, I, I know that he'll have an enjoyable time with his family and his grandkids, so I'm really happy for him. And I hope that he'll show his face occasionally. Keep us in line. <laughs> If there's no further discussion, we'll, we'll take a vote. This is on the, the agenda item F, the acceptance of notification of personnel actions. All in favor? 
Opposed? Passes unanimously. <clears throat> At this time, I will uh, turn the floor over to Superintendent Smith for the superintendent's report. Carpenter. I have the privilege again tonight of introducing you to uh, one of our own, to uh, our student representative. He is the alternate uh, taking over tonight for Jessica Freeborn. His name is Derek Montero. Uh, Derek is a senior here at Brockton High School. He is a student council president. He is a member of our National Honor Society. And uh, Derek, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your plans? Um. I plan to, I've enrolled in, uh, I sent my college application to BU, NYU, Syracuse University, okay. Ohio State, and UMass Amherst, and I hopefully want to double major in social work and psychology, and then go to graduate school for social work. For social work, and come back and be a school adjustment counselor in the Brockton Public Schools? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> um, I hopefully I want to hopefully work with a lot of foster children at some point. Well, very good. And Derek shared with me that he lives on the north side. Yeah. And I was born and raised in Brockton, yep. and I've lived on the north side for the majority of my life. Very good. So I'm going to say a proud member of Ward Seven, Mr. Hensington. I think. <laughs> okay. So Derek, you have a report for us this evening. Um. Um, the new year has started off very smooth. Um, students are glad to be back to school and ready to get back to work. Um, with the seniors, most seniors are basically done with their respective college applications because most college deadlines have already passed or are, already, or are rapidly approaching. They are now working on their FAFSA applications, which are due in a little over a month for most colleges. Term two will end at the end of January. Winter sports are now officially in session and next week on January 17th, History Day will take place at Brockton High from 8 to 11 in the Green and Azure cafeterias. Mostly juniors in U.S. History 2 will be participating. Now Derek, did you do that last year? Did you take part in that? Um, I was in AP European History, so I was exempt. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Any questions for Derek? Welcome, Derek. No. Outstanding job, Derek. Okay, uh, next on our agenda is the recognition of uh, JROTC, and uh, we've been introduced to this a number of times this year. I'd like Principal Wolder uh, to come up and to share with us some, some news. Good evening. Uh, we have a couple of things to cover because as many of you know, in October, uh, Colonel Tripp retired and we introduced a uh, commander for our JROTC program. And within three weeks, the commander realized that it was more than he had hoped for and abruptly departed. And so we have a couple of things we'd like to do tonight. First, I want to update you on the program with that departure. I want to make sure that we publicly recognize uh, Sergeant Major Dana Clark, who is sitting behind us because he was doing the job of two people while we were in the process of getting our new lead commander in, who was sitting next to me, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Clark. So we have a team of Clark and Clark here. So I hope I get my Clarks <laughs> right as I go through this. Um, Again, uh, Lieutenant, uh, this <laughs> not wait a minute. Uh, something doesn't ring right. I'm blocking. I think it fits. Well, uh, Lieutenant Clark no relation to uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Clark, not related to Sergeant Clark, um, joined us at the beginning of December. And But I have to tell you that, to his credit, w immediately after the departure of uh, the person who was originally hired to replace Colonel Tripp, he was invited in. We were going through the process. The hiring process took quite a while. However, he showed up to support our JROTC students. He supported uh, Sergeant Clark, and he, if you saw, if you were at the holiday parade, before he was officially with us, he was there. So um, he was very committed to this, which we knew right away. This was the right choice for us to have him here. He has a 22-year history, right? Am I yes. getting this right? Um, in the military, and is a graduate of West Point, yes, and has a number of other 
he gave me a whole list. I won't read them all to you, but his his credentials are, are quite extensive, and he's done a lot in terms of his military service. I'll let him tell you a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. But we're really excited to have him, and the nicest thing was one of the students today said, we really like him. So he has committed himself to our students, and they feel very comfortable with him, and he's moving forward. And it was nice to see that even before he was officially hired, he was supporting our program, he was supporting Sergeant Clark, and he was supporting our kids. So um, I want to say welcome to you. Um, I also want to make it clear uh, that Sergeant Clark, I can't tell you enough how great he has been because Sergeant Dana Clark, who found out that the other person was leaving as he was walking out the door, stepped right up. He came down and said, what can I do to help? And he was so committed to our students. He said, can we pull them all together, get the entire battalion of 200 students together and, and boost their morale because I don't want them to think that the departure of the other person was in any way a reflection on them as students, on the school, or on our community. And so we pulled them together and, and talked to all of the students who, something like that, they just, you know, Colonel Tripp retired and then they had someone basically walk out after three weeks. It could have been pretty devastating, but the way he handled it was, was it was exemplary, it really was. And the students, they just kept going and kept going. And Sergeant Clark, I think his wife thought he moved into Brockton High School because he was really spending more time at Brockton High than he was at home, uh, but he was doing it on behalf of our students. And so they didn't miss a competition. They didn't miss any of the things that they commit to. They were at the Veterans Day uh, parade. They were at the assembly. They were at every home football game. Uh, they participated in the Avon uh, parade. And they competed in four competitions. And in the midst of all of this, uh, our students won the Governor's Cup. They are the state champions for JROTC, competing against 13 other programs in the state. So I wanted to make sure that we said a special thank you to Sergeant Clark for his commitment. And one of the students wrote about him, and I'll read her words. Uh, Jahira Samito is a senior, and she wrote, during one of the most difficult times for our battalion, Master Sergeant Clark proved to be the ultimate leader. We have so much pride in his ability to lead and be an example to all of us. He is a great role model for the cadets. Master Sergeant Clark was able to restore morale for our cadet corps and constantly reminded us that nothing was too difficult for the Boxer Battalion to overcome. He believed in us and we won the championship and I want to thank him. So I wanted to make sure that we had a chance to publicly thank him as well. So thank you, Sergeant Clark. And as we move forward, I'd like to give Lieutenant Colonel Clark an opportunity to say hello to you. Thank you for the kind welcome, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just express my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to become part of your team. It's an honor and privilege to help educate, train, and coach mentor today's youth. Um, I've been completely impressed with what they've accomplished to date. Uh, they're fantastic kids and they, they should be extremely proud of themselves. We exist to support them. We, want them. we want to motivate them to become better citizens, to give them the leadership, give them the confidence, the organizational, the communicative skills necessary to be successful, not only in high school, but life after high school. Colonel Tripp, for the past 20 years, has built a very successful program. I look forward to working with Sergeant Clark and continuing forward with the successes. And once again, thank you for that opportunity. This is a very welcome assignment. I look forward to it. And that concludes this report. I'll be back to ask you about accreditation in a, a week or two. I was trying to keep it brief, but yes, no problem, sir. <laughs> sure, not a problem. Uh, my pleasure. I graduated from the United States Military Academy back in 1990. After graduation, I was fortunate enough to earn a school, a flight slot down at Fort Rucker, Alabama. I went, underwent flight training, and upon graduation, I uh, spent my first assignment over in Germany. 
and after Germany, spent the next nine years in the regular army progressing through the ranks and really coming up and serving as a company commander. I came at the crossroads. Do I stay in the military or do I depart? to give my kids stability. Because, you know, you move around quite a bit. So I decided to turn down the full ride to Syracuse and settle down in wonderful Stowe, Massachusetts. Raised two lovely daughters. They're both off in college right now, so the pills are still continuing. But I had the opportunity to join the National Guard full time. So I spent the next 13 years, of which 12 more active duty, working full time for the National Guard. And in my assignments, I've had the opportunity to lead folks in combat over to Operation Iraqi Freedom, come back, um, and then really retire with a successful career of 22 years, and then move on into the corporate world. And for the past 18 months, I worked for a technology company working with the transportation management systems. So possessing a breadth of knowledge, both private sector and public sector. But deep down, what it really boils down to is the people that you work with. They're either going to make you successful or not make you successful. And it's really, those are the hidden gems that you really got to capitalize on to be successful and to enjoy life. If I may, um, when Colonel uh, Tripp retired, I was at the, uh, at the retirement uh, ceremony where I was, uh, I was mistaken for uh, the Honorable uh, Mayor Carpenter at the time, which I was uh, very much... Uh, I very much uh, was flattered by that. Yeah. Indeed, same barber, yes. Uh, uh, but in any event, I, my next door neighbor had uh, their grandson was on Iwo Jima for the uh, cessation of uh, hostilities on that island on the 50th anniversary. And uh, as a young, uh, as a young man out of uh, uh, Fort Bragg, and uh, he brought back a satchel full of sand, and I gave uh, and my neighbors gave me a. a, a a large uh, mason jar full of it. And I've given it to friends of mine that are uh, Marine vets over the years. And uh, I gave Colonel Tripp, who's not a Marine, but he, uh, he was on most honored by it. And I had a little bit left, and, and I approached uh, the team Clark and Clark, which uh, certainly I think uh, history will show. Lewis and Clark will have nothing uh, on them at all. Um, and I said, why don't we do something with the remaining sand? And uh, we're working on a project right now, and hopefully uh, We'll have it done by uh, March, the end of March, 26th, right? The cessation of, it'll be the 69th year of uh, cessation of the uh, battle. And uh, we've tasked the uh, cadets to uh, come up with a, a nice plaque. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have a nice ceremony at that point in time and honor the remaining vets uh, as they dwindle away, unfortunately. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, working with uh, Colonel Clark and, and Sergeant Major in the future. Uh, Colonel Clark and I have often spoken together on each on the cell phone in the evening, so he knows uh, he knows when to not pick up the phone. He sees my name come up, and uh, that's all right. But uh, uh, we're off to a great start, and uh, the man is a pure gentleman. The same I must say for Sergeant Major, and I'm telling you, we, we couldn't ask for a better uh, a better outcome than what happened when the, that gentleman uh, uh, decided that he this task was too great for him. Thank you. I would just like to personally welcome uh, Lieutenant Colonel Clark, and, and uh, we're right, very pleased to have you on board. And, and uh, I would just also like to personally thank Master Sergeant Clark for stepping into the void the way he did. JROTC is a leadership program, and I suspect the best lesson the cadets probably got this year was watching Master Sergeant Clark uh, exhibit his leadership skills and you know taking care of the program until we had a replacement. So, Master Sergeant, thank you very much for your efforts for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing uh, Principal Wolder up there, we do have to replace Mr. Donegan on uh, the accreditation team for Brockton High School. Is that yes. correct? Uh, Mr. Donegan can, I guess, serve as a parent. He, has he can a parent, serve as a, a parent in high school and uh, committed to doing so. But we do have to have an active member of the school, of the committee, school committee as part of our accreditation team. Tom, is that something we should do now, or do you want to put that on the agenda for the next meeting so we can poll to see if someone's interested? Or? 
Yeah, why don't we do that? I mean, yeah. we can, um, that way we can talk to people yeah, and see I think who we have, have three new members in. and it wasn't on the agenda for tonight, Mrs. Wald, if it won't have a tremendously negative impact. Uh, it will could. not. That's why I said okay. I'll be back because I yeah. will give you some updates on where we stand with accreditation and that will help too. Yes, yeah, so why don't we'll, we'll put that item on the agenda for our next regularly scheduled meeting. That will give us an opportunity for Mr. Minichello to check with some of the members to see who might be interested in serving. Thank you. Sure. Um, if possibly you could give a synopsis of what the time commitment and, and the schedule uh, of when your meetings are, then we can take a look at it and to see if it fits in our work schedules and that type of thing, and if it's yep. something that's even feasible. And w what we've had to do, too, because uh, Mr. Donegan couldn't make every meeting, mm -hmm. but electronically to communicate so that he was a part of it, knew what the questions were, the things that were being dealt with, and provide information. It doesn't always mean that you have to show up to meetings. Mm -hmm. It just means that as part of a committee, the work that's being done, uh, that you're informed and you can bring information back to the full school committee um, and any information from the school committee that needs to be part of the report, that it can be submitted through the person who's representing the school committee. Okay, that's okay. great. So, yeah, a little bit of information might sure. help yep. us to make an informed decision. That would be great okay, if we could get you. that out to the members. That would be terrific. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Walder. Superintendent. Okay, uh, next item uh, is Footsteps to Brilliance. You've heard me speak about this a number of times. I'm going to be asking our coordinator of 21st Centuries, uh, Laurie Silva, to speak to us uh, and pre do a little presentation. But before we do that, I want to remind you that John Jerome uh, brought this to my attention last year. Uh, while transitioning into the role of, of the superintendent. And we talked about uh, having the lack of space for our three, four, you know, our five-year-olds are certainly in kindergarten, but our younger students. And we had an opportunity to speak to Eileen Rosenthal uh, about this product. And it, it's a product that's being adopted, you know, through, throughout the country, and more specifically right here in our own uh, Commonwealth state of Massachusetts. Um, I happened to be in Revere, visiting the Revere Public Schools last June, and had an opportunity to talk to a principal of the Paul Revere School, uh, and uh, Paul Dakin, the superintendent, and it was uh, the school committee that adopted this program. There are different licenses that you can get. <coughs> And it follows along your zip code. So in Brockton, we would be allowed, if we do purchase this, and we'll talk a little bit about that tonight, but all our children within our zip codes, and I think the ages are like three to seven, would have an opportunity to take part uh, in this. It's literacy, it's literature, it's early learning, it's interactive. It can be on a parent's iPhone, an iPad, whatever device they have. So Mayor Carpenter and I have spoken, and actually in the uh, city of Malden, the superintendent of schools and the mayor joined forces together to come up with the funding for this for their community. There was a big unveiling. Uh, so we are actually going to be having, uh, and Laurie will talk about it, but on February 25th, mm -hmm. we're calling it uh, Brockton Early Learning Innovation Summit. Because what we'd like to do is bring possible funders to the table, and that could be everybody from some of the smaller um, daycare centers, uh, Head Start program, uh, some of our business partners, uh, bringing in some of the uh, foundations possibly. So we're looking of ways to, to possibly fund this and get a six-year license, which allows us uh, to have, have a perpetual license. Perpetual license, correct. So, so we again, would then on the licensing. We'll see a little bit about this. You'll be getting an invitation from uh, the mayor and, and myself. And we are going to look to uh, have buy-in from, from all the members of the Brockton community. So, Laurie, you want to... Thank you. Good evening, all. Um, we're all aware of the importance of um, early literacy skill development in our children. We've had um, many um, discussions about it in prior um, times. And we do have a good deal of current efforts that are underway between our, our Office of uh, Learning and Teaching, um, our coordinated family and uh, community engagement grant that's um, offered throughout the district, um, many of the child care providers, Head Start programs, things like that. Um, however, um, there's definitely a need for more scaffolding of, of the services that we're able to offer our children. Um, across the district, uh, not just this district, but across uh, many of our urban settings, um, approximately 50% of our student population enters school with the risk of having challenges because they lack the essential um, literacy skills, um, which in turn leads to further development and issues for being able to read. Um, so those children tend to have um, challenges throughout school in, in finding it difficulty to make up for those that, that disadvantage that they start with early on. 
Footsteps to Brilliance, as, as um, Superintendent had mentioned, is uh, it's an early learning mobile technology uh, platform that it, it actually accelerates student achievement by uniting the power of mobile learning technology with the most current cognitive research on how to expand and enhance students' learning abilities. So the following video, we have a video that we'll be showing. It's very short, I promise you, and I do want to thank Cheryl again for her assistance and support in providing uh, this for us. But it It'll provide you an overview and understanding on, on exactly what Footsteps to Brilliance actually looks like and what it actually looks like from the eyes of a child actually utilizing the program. And she's adorable. very um, engaged when they're utilizing this this um, product um, and one of the, the most beneficial aspects of it is there is a great deal of um, reports that can be generated that can help either um, a skilled um, certified classroom teacher, a parent, um, a child care provider on, on ways to how to further assist and support their, their child um, in their further development. Um, when when uh, we're looking to um, hold that event um, on the, the 25th, we we are looking to have a group of children that will be um, present for that day as well, that not only will we have presenters um, there speaking to the benefits of the program, but the children will actually be modeling and showing exactly like this child did um, it, how the program is utilized. There's professional development that's offered um, to the district if we choose to adopt this so that our staff can become more versed in how to use it as a tool in the classroom setting, as well as being having some support for community people who would also be interested in using it and adopting it um, in the district. 
The, one of the main reasons why we're, we're pulling all stakeholders together on this and we're inviting people from the business community, as the superintendent mentioned, we're inviting most of the local philanthropics to the event. We've already um, reached out to some of them to help prepare them for a better understanding of why we're asking them to come to the table. We're looking for child care providers in the community, Head Starts, um, but basically anybody that has a vested interest, which should be the entire community, and preparing our youth to be better able to be equipped to succeed in their school environment. So at that point during that day, we will be having donor cards available for solicitations. Some of them will be for individual amounts, people who want to do individual uh, amounts of say $5, $10, as well as the larger corporate um, accounts. The cost of the program is it can be, it's, um, it's based on a six year plan. It's $96,000 per year with a total cost of $576,000. That would give us the perpetual license ability so that we would then own the licensing for as long as we needed it. And the um, program that we would be, um, uh, um, the, uh, that we would be under as an umbrella would be called a model innovation city. And it would be the licensing capability, as the superintendent mentioned, to service every single child uh, in the city of Brockton. Questions? Is this a program that would be available to parents to use at home with their children? I see she's Absolutely. on an iPad. So how would they have access to the program? Each, each um, child uh, basically receives a username and a, okay. and a, and a passcode. Uh -huh. So and it is be, it just like an app that they would, um, yes. that they would download it into their iPad or tablet yes, or whatever exactly. they Exactly. And it can be used on, on iPhones, oh. smartphones, um, mm -hmm. iPads, computers. Um, and it's definitely designed for uh, working with parents with their children, working with you know, educational professionals with children. Um, it's really, it's, it's, it's really geared towards every person who comes in contact with a child age three to grade, um, grade uh, three to have access and support. Is these there supports. a limit to the number of licenses? No. No, so actually every child, every single child would be able to get a username and password and be able to use it at home. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it really is. I love that idea. One of the models yes. I saw was the parent riding in the car and the child had, uh, obviously the parents, I think it was an iPhone. And the child was in the back seat, you know, doing all of the things you saw little Bella do here. You know, while the parent was driving, doing errands, uh, occupied the child. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was a great. Uh, well, I, th I really think that that's huge for parents, especially parents of preschoolers who may not know the best tools to use mm -hmm. to teach their children, and to have something that is backed by the school system, that it, it is used in conjun conjunction with what's going on in the classroom. Absolutely, it, just, it really gives a comfort level to to parents to know that what their children is u uh, the child is using is going to be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. So I really like. That. And we've had discussions with representatives. From um, for this area in particular, it's been Revere, Mald, and, and Everett. Is that correct, yes. Kathy? Yeah. Um, that have adopted um, the system, and, and it's been a huge success as far as they're concerned, as far as the rollout um, and the buy-in from the community, um, as far as using it as an additional support. Yep. What is the starting age that they recommend? Three, three. age three. three. And we don't currently service three-year-olds or four-year-olds in our system. Is there any idea on how you're going to reach out to those children until we? We do have a universal preschool program. Exactly. We do service them um, at the Gilmore. Um, a limited number. A limited so. number, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, and one of the, the ways that we would um, unroll this, which is why we're inviting all the family ch child care providers from mm -hmm. the, from the, um, the city, all the center-based providers from the city, um, and, and various business members, um, we're inviting them to the summit. But then uh, the other part of our, um, of our uh, plan to unroll this um, is basically is to utilize uh, YouTube videos such as this mm -hmm. with cable. We've already um, connected with cable so that parents who maybe don't have children already enrolled in mm -hmm. some kind of a, a preschool program, um, that they would be able to have access and, and gain information for this. We also have a billboard design that's um, been established. We've already worked with Footsteps to Brilliance to have a, um, a billboard design created. So that 
is also available for us for when we want to un unroll this to the community should we be able to find the funding resources to be able to do this. And that's our full intent is that we will work quite diligently to ensure that we do receive the necessary funding for this because I, I do believe, um, as we all do, I'm sure, that this is a key piece to helping us support our children and families in the community. You know what else I, I noticed uh, when the little girl was navigating through the screens and driving, dragging and dropping and things like that is her comfort level with the technology and the park assessment exactly. it just really dovetails so well with getting our kids comfortable with technology so that when if they're starting at age three working on on tablets and working with that technology they're really going to be um, you know, increasing their comfort level and their skill level. With and working on it for, edit it for an educational endpoint. Yeah, Not exactly. necessarily a, a video game type thing, but an educational endpoint. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. You're right, yeah. Mrs. Joyce, because last night uh, Liz Barry uh, and I attended the uh, Hancock Pack meeting, and of course that's one of our schools that has chosen to uh, field test park. You know, we brought the tablet, we talked to the parents, uh, you know, Liz talked to them a little bit about uh, what the children were going to be learning in school now to prepare them for the field testing coming up. We have the Raymond School tomorrow evening. We'll be attending the mm -hmm. pack there to, to share with those parents, which is our other, our K-8 school that has been chosen to field test park. So all of those things have come to mind. Uh, Laurie's mentioned a number of ways. We would certainly have a blitz in the community, mm -hmm. whether it's through our parent information center where we're registering young children. As Laurie said, working with other providers, you know, in the you know community to make sure that we reach as many parents as we can. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a lot of community partners to support us if we can find the funding and make mm -hmm. the decision to go forward with this. There also, I will tell you at my urban superintendent's meetings, uh, which are held once a month, I have one this Friday, uh, Revere has talked about this, uh, Everett, Malden, and there are other urban communities looking to do similar things to what we're doing presently. So I anticipate we'll see this in a number of communities. Mr. Robinson, does this, does this program rely on like everyday internet access, or is it you need the access to be able to download it and then it runs itself? Correct. That's so, so you don't have to be on Wi-Fi or have access to Wi-Fi? Uh, I would have to double check on that. Like, like I have this iPad. It doesn't have right. a Wi-Fi plan. Um, some of the apps I have on here function in the absence of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, some only function with Wi-Fi. Um, I, think I would have to double check on that, to be honest with you. It's fair to acknowledge that some of our families and students won't have everyday access to Wi-Fi. Right, right. Um, and probably the highest risk students, the, the ones who are really looking to target, are the ones who are even less likely to have those kind of everyday luxuries. Um, so I just, I'd, I'd be interested to find out what kind of functionality it has when it's not connected to Wi-Fi. Obviously, the app still exists on a tablet or a phone, but if it doesn't have Wi-Fi service, is it a useful app? I'll put um, information in your packets this Friday okay, so you can have some of the information yeah, that we I'd have. I'd love to see that. I, I had mm -hmm. the same note here as Patty about building the skills for park. I think I saw that Absolutely. right away on the screen. Um, I didn't hear public libraries mentioned, and I wonder if it's... Yeah, we're actually yeah, hosting the event there. Okay. So, you know, Great. we've already actually connected with the library because um, we figured they're a major partner in this. And yeah. um, we would love to see this so that, you know, um, that r the computer stations that they have at the, in the Children's Center at the library have, have this, you know, on it so that, you know, it can be yeah. accessed there. Given that we're the ones who are going to own the license, is there any collection of, like, utilization data that we'll have access to? Yes. So if we give out... Yes. Uh, you know, 10,000 licenses. We'll know how many of those 10,000 are utilizing this, how often. They'll yes. tell you all of that um, information. So there's all, all sorts of analytics that come with this that we'll exactly. be able to Exactly. That's why I was saying there's an extensive data reporting section that you can uh, pull data um, from this. As specific as student? As Absolutely. individual child? Yes. Data? I guess yes. Not, potentially not all of these will be our students. I mean, I, I imagine we'll have young people who might enroll who choose to go to private school or aren't enrolled in school yet. Um, but it'd certainly be awesome to be able for teachers, for parents. Uh, it is. That's why you know, you can, it, it can be down this. to the individual student data reports with regards to how each individual student is um, utilizing the, the program and their, um, their growth patterns. Yeah, because certainly if we're going to make a, a half million dollar investment, we want to make sure that oh, whatever we're doing to promote years. it is actually resulting in utilization. Yeah. And if it's not, what do we need to do different to make sure that it's used in the way that mm -hmm. we see And we're it. certainly inviting all the schools, not just the Brockton Public Schools. Yeah, we no, see yes. Which is why, again, yes. the, the mayor, the superintendent, we see this as a collaborative approach to reach all of our children. 
Yeah, and I, I mean, I'd really love for us to think specifically as, as this plan evolves and moves forward about how we plan to target the students with the highest level of need. I think mm -hmm. this is a no-brainer for, like you said, half of our students. But there's this other half who aren't, you know, for whatever reason, don't, you know, get the adequate number of words a day at home. And exactly. Don't have the opportunities exactly. To either be read to or read. Um, those are going to simply having access to an app like this isn't going to all of a sudden make them do those things. So how, how do we access them? How do we uh, build buy-in amongst them? How do we create opportunities? And you know, that's kind of what spurred my question about how, how useful is this without internet access? Um, and I, I guess you know, this is kind of a down-the-road question too, but um, if, if you know, given that a portion of our population is so transient, if we give out a license um, to say a first grader now who by third grade is no longer in our system, do, are they allowed to continue to use the system with that login? It's basically, I don't see that as a bad goes, thing. It, it it's goes by the, the zip code. So it's um, the it's the it's the actual uh, multiple zip codes that are, that are in Brockton. That those are the so they areas have that to, like ping within that zip code to be able to use it, or they have to register with the zip code that's in Brockton. They have to register with the zip code, and then um, I believe it's it's an unlimited licensing. So even if yeah. the child leaves, it wouldn't cost us anything to allow that child to no. take that no little piece of useful technology with them or use it for younger kids and their family. I mean, hopefully, you know, families with more than one kid just have to download the app on all the devices. Exactly, and just and just use it across the board. Um, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, the uh, version of Footsteps to Brilliance we would be looking at, they have uh, what they're calling a bilingual version. Yes. Uh, there's a note in here, you'll be able to see it. It talks about meeting the needs of English language learners and special learners. So there was a particular focus on You're those welcome. populations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It's very exciting. Yes. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Okay. At this point in the agenda, would any uh, members of the committee like to uh, suggest items to refer to a subcommittee? Mr. Minichella. I, I think there's a um, matter that needs to be brought forth and scheduled for the facilities subcommittee. And um, I believe Michael is the chair, and Patty yep. and Ray are on that subcommittee. Okay. So they need to discuss a date to schedule. Could we utilize our next Tuesday evening? We had started the practice of utilizing Tuesday evenings that were not school committee meeting dates. So next Tuesday is the 14th of January. Um, you know, we have some issues that we'd like to talk about going forward as far as facilities. Uh, we have presented uh, the issue of some modular classrooms that needed replacing. So we really need to move. And the school committee had uh, asked the superintendent to make sure we were not doing this in April or May, looking at, you know, the increase in our population and what our plans were for next year. So, Mr. Healy, the 14th, okay with you? That's fine by me. Okay. So we'll schedule a... Tom's uh, facility subcommittee for six o'clock or what, what time? Patty is six, okay. Six what do you think? Six o'clock on the fourteenth at the Arnone School, assuming it's available, and Wanda will let us know if it's not and get us another location if it's not. Okay. Except I better put that in my calendar too. The fourteenth at six PM at the Arnone. Okay. Any other items to be referred to subcommittee? Okay, we'll move on then. At this point then, how about unfinished business? I suppose seeing as half of you weren't here at the members of the last <laughs> meeting, that reduces our potential for unfinished business for first time attendees. Uh, <laughs> hearing none, we'll move on then. How about new business? Everyone's eligible for new business. <laughs> Mr. Robinson. Just um, one uh, experience that took place here at the high school right before the holidays. Um, I've talked a little bit about the recycling initiative that I've been working on with Mr. Thomas. Um, as part of that initiative, my wife and I had the opportunity last summer to travel to Africa. And, and um, just before the Christmas break, we had an absolutely amazing experience. Um, one of our science classrooms here at the high school um, had the opportunity to have a Skype session uh, with a group of young people from Tanzania. Um, and it, it, for 45 minutes, we got to talk to young kids uh, just like them 
halfway across the world. Um, and it was just a really neat experience that I want to make sure people are aware of. Um, it's, it's one of multitude of experiences that the kids get here every day, you know, our young people get here every day. Um, but it was a really special one and one that I hope we'll, we'll be able to um, kind of continue and foster. Um, certainly the students are interested in having this opportunity again. Um, the friends that I was able to, to make in Africa r reported um, back that it was an amazing experience for their young people as well and it's something that they're interested in continuing with our young people. Um, and and uh, talking to Dan Vigent in our technology department, we may even be able to improve the experience both for us and them uh, using some of our technology uh, to make the, those, those calls and those video conferences a, a little bit um, easier and, and higher quality to manage. Um, but just, I think, an incredible eye-opening experience for, for both our kids and theirs. Um, a, a handful of their kids had an experience, had the opportunity to come to the United States about a year ago um, and spent three weeks at a high school in Colorado. And one of the things they challenged our kids with was um, the, the way in which they show that they value their own education. They said that the one thing that struck them in a three-week experience here in the United States was that the young people here uh, take many things about their education for granted. Um, and, and so they, one of the questions they had for our kids was, what do you do on a daily basis to show that you value your education? And our kids were struck by the question and I think struggled to answer a little bit, but, but made them think um, incredibly so. Uh, the, the, it was all young men on the other end of the line. Um, and part of that was because they're eight hours ahead of us. And it was already after dark. And, and several of the girls in the class said, where are the young women in your group? And they said, well, they're not here because young women aren't allowed to be out after dark. Um, and that, too, was, was kind of striking for some of our students. Um, but I think there's a, a wealth of opportunity that can hopefully come from this. And uh, it was exciting to be a part of the, the kind of the the birth of that and, and um, just hoping that, that we get to kind of see where it goes over the course of the next months, weeks, years maybe. Um, but very, very cool. And don't get any ideas, guys. School committee retreat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting when you mention the technology. Um, we actually sat today, um, Sharon Wolder, Bob Perkins, myself, and Dan Vigian, talking about a number of policy issues that will eventually start to talk about changes in social media. But that being said, we talked about our new video conferencing system. So if you come into the conference room, the superintendent's conference room, you'll see this terrific setup. And, you know, I said to Dan, you know, we've got to really start using this. And we were talking about having our high school staff stay at the high school and conducting meetings. And uh, so hopefully we'll be able to start to use uh, some of this technology. We can make it work for that. I, I think so. <laughs> okay, anyth anyone else under new business? Mr. Healy. I'd just like to uh, address the, uh, the chair. As a new uh, member of, uh, of Ward 6, I want you to feel uh, uh, comfortable in your new capacity that you can uh, reach out to me anytime you want, <laughs> as any other constituent can concerning matters uh, 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 concerning the school department uh, as a constituent of Ward 6. As you so succinctly put uh, in your inaugurational uh, address, uh, we all came to these shores, uh, uh, when you quoted uh, Dr. King, we all came to these shores by different boats, but boy, we're all in the same boat now. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> we all came on different ships. That's right. But we're in the same boat now. Yeah. Great quote. There you go. Great Thank quote. You. Good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Healy, I'll be look forward to calling you at various hours of the night and weekend. That's quite all right. <laughs> I'm sure <you> <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I stepped into that one, didn't so I? I? Express, <laughs> so I express a few of my concerns. <laughs> uh, any other new business? Well, hearing none, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oppose? This meeting is adjourned. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs>